Hello, my name is Katherine Hellman, and today I will be presenting my master's thesis in partial fulfillment for the requirements of the degree of Master of Public Health Epidemiology Concentration at the School of Global Public Health at New York University. Thank you. The title of my research is The Relationship Between a Mother's Insurance Status During Prenatal Care and Compliance with the Back to Sleep Campaign Between 2016 and 2017 in Virginia, a Cross-Sectional Study. To begin with some background information, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, SIDS, is the unexplainable death of an infant under one year of age after case investigation, autopsy, and clinical history review. SIDS is the fourth leading cause of infant mortality in the U.S. and the first leading cause of post-neonatal mortality. From current research, we know in the U.S., black infants overall are more than twice as likely to die than white infants. We also know infants of women with master's or doctor's degrees are 74% less likely to die from sudden unexpected deaths than infants of women with less than a high school diploma. So to combat SIDS, the Back to Sleep campaign began in the U.S. in 1994 to educate women to place their infants on their backs when sleeping. Research shows sleeping in the supine position on the back decreases risk of choking during sleep in infants. The American Academy of Pediatrics has five recommendations relating to infant sleep position. Most recently, in a 2016 19-part policy by the American Academy of Pediatrics on Safe Sleep Environment, quote, back to sleep for every sleep, end quote, was the number one recommendation for safe sleep. According to the most recent data in Virginia, 77% of mothers most often place their babies on his or her back to sleep 100% of the time. But I'm interested in the 23% of those who did not comply. Non-compliance can lead to infant mortality, which is a huge public health concern. Studying at-risk populations for non-compliance can lead to a better understanding of why non-compliance happens. My study fills the gap in literature examining insurance status as an exposure for compliance. Only one other study, to my knowledge, examined insurance status in relation to knowledge and behavior of infant sleep behavior. The study found Medicaid status to not be significantly associated with knowledge or behavior of various infant sleep practices. My specific research question is, do women with public insurance or women with no insurance comply to the back to sleep campaign at lower rates than women with private insurance? For my study, I used data from the Virginia Pregnancy Risk Monitoring System Survey, PRAMS. PRAMS is a national survey created in 1987 by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Division of Reproductive Health, along with state health departments. States are responsible for collecting data. For my study, data was requested from the Virginia Department of Health, and the study was approved by institutional review boards at the Virginia Department of Health and New York University. To be eligible for my study, women must have responded to questions regarding to prenatal insurance status and compliance with back to sleep, which gave me a sample size of 2,545. Virginia weighs data to be more representative of the state's true population demographics. In my study, the exposure variable was insurance status, coded as private, public, or none. The outcome variable was non-compliance. There were four covariates included as potential confounders, maternal race slash ethnicity, maternal age, maternal education, and household income. For the statistical analyses, Univariate analyses identified unweighted frequencies and weighted means of each variable. For bivariate analyses, chi-squared test estimated associations of the covariates with insurance status and non-compliance. Then, multivariable logistic regression estimated associations of non-compliance with back to sleep and prenatal insurance status, adjusting for the four covariates. Private insurance was the reference group, and 62% of the participants had private insurance. The unadjusted bivariable analyses revealed a relationship between insurance status and noncompliance. However, the multivariable logistic regression analyses revealed that after adjusting for maternal race, ethnicity, age, education, and household income, women who paid for prenatal care with public insurance and women who had no insurance both have the same odds of non-compliance compared to women with private insurance. My study found no statistically significant relationship 
between prenatal insurance status and back-to-sleep compliance behavior. Women who paid for prenatal care with private insurance, women who paid for prenatal care with public insurance, and women with no insurance all have the same statistical odds of being non-compliant. Insurance status alone does not have an effect on a mother placing her infant on his or her back to sleep. Results from my study can be used by public health professionals when making infant sleep health campaigns. Sleep health campaigns should not be targeted to different insurance types due to the non-association found in my study. Additionally, knowing that insurance status does not have an effect on compliance behavior can teach public health officials how to interact with mothers in a more productive way during prenatal care by not factoring insurance status into their interactions with pregnant women and new mothers. My study can also be replicated to study insurance status's relationship to other health compliance behaviors in the future. The most severe limitation of my study is the small sample size, particularly the limited number of observations coded as non-compliant. There might also be recall bias, selection bias, and residual confounding. A positive aspect of my study is that I'm using the most recent data available. Virginia expanded Medicaid just prior to 2016, which makes studies relating to insurance status extremely relevant and important today. Thank you for listening to my presentation for my master's thesis.